Hey guys, what is up? Quackware right here. Today we are going to be talking about pointers and references. So this is probably going to be a multi-part tutorial. Um, I'll release it, you know, every couple days like normal, um, since pointers and references are pretty complicated to understand and learn. And just giving the introduction and basics, which I will be doing, is still going to take, you know, a little bit extra time than the standard 10 minutes or so of, of a tutorial. Okay, so to get started, whenever you run like a program like, you know, this very simple int main, everything in here is loaded into memory from the disk. So it's compiled into, you know, the various bytecode or whatever um, from the source code, and then it's loaded directly into memory. So you could think of memory as a giant array, if you're familiar with arrays, where each value, such as, you know, int i, j, Okay, each value here um, in the actual program is stored somewhere in memory where the value that you set to it, such as 10, so this 10 is stored somewhere in basically a global array in RAM, um, random access memory. Um, that value and is, is, is stored in somewhere in there. And pointers enable us to basically access the location at which this value is stored. And we're able to manipulate the data directly from that address that we have to that location. So the index into that global array. So memory is it's pretty much laid out sequentially as a sequence of bits, which compose bytes, um, if you're familiar with some of those basic CS concepts. And the address is, is the index into that array. OK. So let's go ahead and write, you know, a simple sample program that sh kind of shows what we're talking about in terms of like addresses and how a program is laid out. So we're going to have a couple of variables in this main statement, and we're also going to have a couple of global variables just to show you how the addresses of each of these uh, variables is is different and how um, it's it's shown in memory. Okay, so let's just do int cat dog. Um, What's another animal? Snake. So we'll create these three global variables and these three local variables. And what we want to do is we want to print out the address of these variables in memory. Even though we haven't really set any values to them, we still want to see if we actually set a value to them where they are stored in memory um, compared to each other and compared to you know the local and global. So in order to do that, we first are going to create, let's go ahead and do using namespace standards so that we don't have to write that a lot. And the way to access a, the address of any variable is to use the ampersand, um, uh, ampersand operator. Yeah, that's what they're called. <laughs> And we want to print out the location and memory of, say, i. We would do something like c out um, i address equals, and then at i. And I'll, of course, doing it this. So what this will do is it'll take this int. It'll actually reference the address um, that this is stored, and it'll print it out. So I believe this will print out in hex. You can also cast it to a long or something else if you want like a, a better print. Um, but let's go ahead and copy this for each of our variables. So we want j and k, cat, dog, and snake. And let's change these references here. So this may seem like a little bit weird, like, okay, what are we trying to even accomplish with this? But it's it's good to get like a basic understanding of how things are laid out in a program because that information will come in, come in use uh, later if you're trying to debug something or basically to have a more lower level understanding of your program is really important in C++. So let's go ahead and save it, compile it, and run it. OK, so let's take a look at these addresses. Remember, if you think of memory as a global array where there might be a sequential addresses, um, these are the indexes into it. So let's go ahead and look at i, j, and k first. You see this is basically the index into it. And 
we have this address, 6FEB4. Let's actually convert these to longs to make it easier to understand if you guys are unfamiliar with hex. Um, I know I can't read it too well. So this way, it'll be easy to see how they relate to each other in terms of location in this global array known as memory. Let's go ahead and recompile it and run it. Okay, so you can see that this, these i, j, and k that we created here are pretty much located around the same area in memory. Because we, um, if you think of, see, each integer I believe is stored in a byte, which is 8, so 36, so not exactly next to each other, but pretty, pretty close. And if you look at the global variables, you can see that they're in a much uh, different location in the actual global memory array. And you can see that by, you know, instead of 1, 8, it's 2, 0, something, something. So the way that the program is structured in terms of being loaded into memory is, is a pretty advanced topic. We won't really get into it now. But, but just by looking at this uh, code, you can see basically the different areas where these variables can be stored. Another cool thing to see is actually not really for the case of these IJK variables, but for the global cat dog snake. If you take a look at these addresses, you can see that they're actually only separated by four um, four bytes. So you can see this this eight 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 nine two eight nine six. That means that this cat dog and snake are actually directly next to each other in memory. So um, if you think of you know as an array. I always like to think of arrays as boxes, something like this. Just a good visual. Let's go ahead and copy this. So if each of these boxes is um, a four byte piece of memory, uh, you can think of cat as here, dog as here, snake as here. And that's if we're going from, let's take a look at this code, cat. So this is least to greatest, so 889296. So this is 88, this is 92, this is 96. And then before this, there's tons of other stuff, you know, various things that needed to be set up in in the program, and then all the way over here is i, j, and k. So this might be, like right here might be, you know, start of global memory. Um, and then this is, you know, start of main memory or something like that. So you can see how, you know, everything's kind of structured in one big array and you can see where, you know, various things are, things are stored. Um, so this is kind of like a general overview. The next tutorial will cover basically what we can accomplish with these pointers and uh, references. So make sure to tune in for that. And that's it for this tutorial. Make sure to uh, subscribe, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, it's Quackware signing.